Hi everyone, and welcome to this new video. In this, the second part of showing you the costumes that I have from North and South, I'll be showing you my favourite costumes that I own, and these are worn by the characters of Ashton and Brett, who are the daughters of the family from the South side of the story. So let's get into looking at these dresses. The first dress I want to show you is this evening dress that was worn by Terry Garber as Ashton in episode one, book two. The dress had been used a lot in her history before she got to me and it had been altered and the skirt had actually been turned up to the bottom of the scallops <laughs> so I had the job of unpicking everything and then as I did this it just got worse and worse and I'll insert some pictures here so you can see the damage there was holes cut out of the fabric it was ripped it was in a really bad way and I took some advice from a conservator about what I should do to help stabilise it and prevent any more damage, so I did that. Um, the skirt was originally backed with uh, organza, but you can see here how it's just completely shredded away. Also, this decoration that's on the skirt, you don't really get to see in the, in the scene because the dress is only seen in two very quick long shots and I've actually found a fashion plate from the 1860s which I think was probably the inspiration for this decoration on the skirt. On the front of the bodice it has these two tabs rather than the normal pointed bottom of the bodice which is quite unusual and also I love the uh, chevron pleating in the front panels as it matches the decoration that's going on on the skirt. Here you can see the beadwork that's on the bertha of the bodice. It's all carried out in tiny seed beads and bugle beads and the occasional crystal. Also there were originally red crystals hanging here but they've been taken off at some point for another production. The sleeve decoration matches that which is on the skirt where there's one layer of pleated satin and then a layer of pleated organza but the organza is very delicate and again it's shredding away around the edges and with this dress it's just a case of trying to preserve it as long as possible because the fabrics are very very delicate. The bodice fastens with hook and bar tape, as all the other costumes do. But here you can also see how much damage there actually is to the fabric and what I mean by having to preserve her as long as possible. Because there's not really anything else I can do with this to restore it to what it was before. Here on the back of the skirt you can actually see that there are one, two, two of the satin scallop, pleated scallops missing. So those might be something that I might look into replacing at some point. And also there is this loop on the back of the skirt on the center back seam. And Ashton does dance in this dress in the scene she waltzes, but she doesn't have the skirt on her arm or anything. So I can only think that this may have been used as a way to hook the skirt up just to keep it clear from the cameras while they were filming that part of the scene. The bodice carries two labels, one on each side of the centre back. One is just a blank label and the other label just has Terry written in it, but Terry is spelt wrongly 
as is the case in most of the costumes that I have that were worn by Terry Garber. The bodice has been really well made, um, it's exceptional quality. All the seams have been bound, which is quite unusual for a costume to have that detail in. The skirt doesn't carry any Western Costume Company labels, apart from their barcoding system label here. But here you can see clearly the amount of deterioration there is to the silk organza that's in the skirt and also how the actual silk fabric is really starting to wear away here. This second dress was worn by Ashton in Book 2 Episode 5 when she goes to visit Drummond. When the dress is worn in the episode, you never actually see this bow on the back of the dress. And I think it's there purely to keep the skirt closed, as if you know the seam, the skirt is open all the way down the back. The fabrics that this dress were made of are incredibly delicate, and you can see the amount of wear and tear she's been through, especially on the bodice, through her 36 years of being used. The original skirt over fabric was the same black organza with embroidered gold flowers that was used on the sleeves, but I'm assuming it was changed at some point because the fabric rotted. But the lace scallops are still on the under skirt, which you can actually see in the episode but also missing off the skirt at the points, top points of every scallop, there was a bow and there are 30 bows missing from the skirt. Here you can see the original fabric that was used on the skirt and the sleeves. It's a black organza with these stylized gold flowers on it. It's something that I would like to uh, have replicated but I've looked into it and the cost of having something like this embroidered would be at least a thousand pounds so it's really way out of my price range for having something like that done. This is one of my two favourite dresses that Terry Garber wore in the series and I'm so pleased that I was actually able to get this one. The other one has seen to disappear since it was auctioned in 2013 and that was the white evening dress she wore to the dance at West Point. The other thing that really surprised me about this dress was the colour. I wasn't expecting it to be pink when she arrived. Um, looking at the scene in the episode she looks to be more of like a brick red colour but I'm assuming that's because of the black organza fabric that was over the top of the pink. The bodice only has one label in it and there's no label in the skirt and the label has just got Terry Garber written on it and again Terry's name is spelled incorrectly with a Y. And lastly this dress is worn by Brett in book one episode six where she and Billy are chased through the streets of Charleston. The skirt is made of this satin striped pulp taffeta and unlike most of the other skirts this one is actually just made up of straight whips of fabric. The bodice is made out of a rose beige silk satin, not polyester satin as people think and also all the piping is made out of the striped pulp taffeta and then we have this lovely lace trim all around the edges and then 
there are crochet buttons down the front but unfortunately it's just missing two at the very bottom. Another nice touch on the bodice is that the sleeves are actually lined in the same fabric as the skirt which is a rather nice touch and also so are the little jockey sleeves at the top which of course you never ever get to see that detail at all. This is a dress that I've always loved since the series first came out in 1985 when I first saw it but I think that was more to do with the scene and that you saw Brett running through the streets and you saw all her frilly underwear um, but this was the dress that started off my collection of North and South dresses. You can see here on the shoulder that it's starting to wear so I'll have to probably just catch that down, make it a bit secure to stop it pulling any further. A couple of the dresses that Jeannie Francis wore as Brett in book one actually dated back to films from the 1940s. Uh, one was worn by Anne Blythe, uh, which Jeannie Francis wore as a riding habit when riding with Billy, and then the red dress she wears in the carriage when she takes the copy of Uncle Tom's Cabin to Ori had been worn in the film The Foxes of Harrow and had been designed by Rene Hubert. Here you can see that the bodice fastens to the skirt with hook and eyes so this is just to stop the two items of clothing separating when it's being worn and obviously it was quite an action scene that this dress was worn in. So here's the inside of the bodice you can see again that it's been let out through the centre back for a later production and the piping has been split here to give it the increased width. It also carries two labels in the collar facing. One can just about make out the name Jeannie Francis but not what's written underneath it and then on the second label it says Jeannie Francis, North and South, and number one, costume one, it looks like, with the hashtag one, which is a bit odd because this is actually costume two from this episode, and then CW111, which is obviously Western's coding. But there is also another label in this, which is actually quite interesting, which I was quite surprised to find. And it's this one sewn into the side seam and it says Nevada Ballet Theatre. So I was wondering why this label was in there, so I contacted them and they told me that they actually had hired this costume from Western to use in their production of Nutcracker. And that's why the label was in there. And then that would have explained why the skirt had been turned up so much when I received it. Well, I hope you all enjoyed looking at those. Um, if you haven't seen the previous videos I'll link them in the description below and also on the end screen and please join me again very soon for another video.